Fireman Andrew Armstrong, welcome to the Back Office Show. Today I finally decided to fix my dying computer and just sort of go through the history for those people of you who don't know. Um, I've had this computer for well over a year and it's had problems. It's had a few problems and I replaced power supplies and motherboards and pretty much everything, graphics cards, the works and it's still unreliable so now I can only conclude it is the CPU so basically now I've almost got a whole well I have I've got an entire second computer's worth of parts now so all I need to do is buy a spare one of these CPUs and I can build two so this is an AMD FX9590 CPU and I'll just let you know the specs here from the back of the box really 9590 it's a 8 core um, which is an octa-core, eight processors, with a five gigahertz maximum turbo mode and a 4.7 gigahertz base mode. So it's pretty fast. And I use it for obviously video rendering and everything really, playing games stuff. So it's a bit of a noisy brute because it lives in a noisy machine. I have it water cooled and I discovered quite recently that perhaps my water cooler wasn't running at the correct voltage. So I believe that the old chip may well have expired due to overheating. I think its memory management unit was damaged because it will run and certain configurations in certain, you know, uh, fewer cores at half the speed or quarter the speed it'll run and then if it gets a bit warm it cocks up. So I've also got this Cooler Master fan and I don't think this fan is optimum for this CPU but I bought it as a spare just in case my water cooler it really isn't up to scratch. So when I put this in, if it starts messing up right away then we'll know that it's the water cooler and we'll need to try this instead. And what I've also done is I've got some new paste and I'm just going to show you I tend to use these commercial grade heatsink pastes which are from just for basically industrial stuff if you're building loads of PCBs with chips on you use this but I know there are more specialized stuff so like this Arctic Silver or Arctic MX2 compound so I'm going to give this a go I don't know really if there's much difference between them to be honest or if it's just marketing marketing words but uh, I'll give that a play so what I think we ought to do though before I start I'm just going to run some benchmarking software on my existing CPU. I'll try to turn it back up to the octa cores and see if it will run. If not, I'll run it on as many cores as it can and get it to render some video for a few minutes so we can just measure a baseline. And then uh, we'll swap this in and see what the uh, end result is. So you can see my CPU. Well, so you can see my PC here. It's in this Aero Cool open frame case, so it's good, it's easy to get to all the bits. So I've sort of tried to add fans and things just to try to keep it cool. Fortunately, the CPU's here just by this water cooler block. You can see the pipe going to the radiator here. So I've got access to underneath, so I can just unscrew that, pop this out, and change it. But before I do that, though, I'm going to run some tests and see if, well, just see if it actually fires up. So I'm going to turn it on. That way it goes. PC's running now, I've got all the octa-cores turned on. I'm going to just check the power options. Uh, power options, here we go. Because I want to make sure that I haven't capped the CPU limit, and I believe I probably have. So maximum processor state here, I've got it set to 50. So I'm going to set this to full to 100 now. So now it will run as an octa-core with 100% CPU. I've got Geekbench, which I've downloaded from the internet. I haven't tried it before, but you know, it's the first one I've come along. I'm going to use this to benchmark between now and then when I uh, change the CPU. And in the background, I've got the Corsair Link software measuring the CPU temperature in this little graph here. So you can see it's 56 degrees here and 9.4 at the bottom at the moment, but that scale does change. So I'm just going to run the CPU benchmark test. This is a, be a really interesting test because if the PC sort of crashes now and dies, then that gives us a pretty good baseline that it's very unstable at this, this sort of configuration. But uh, the weird thing is, I think once you've got sort of symptoms of uh, some sort of MMU damage, that it becomes really spurious. The PC will run really well, it'll run for months perhaps, flawlessly, and then all of a sudden you'll turn it on one day and it'll just refuse to boot and continue to refuse to boot for the entire day. So it's almost um, unpredictable when it's going to start messing up. However, it did seem to mess up, you know, you can get it to consistently mess up though by causing it to do things that would generate a lot of heat. So once the CPU temperature reached a certain magic number, and I can't remember it exactly, but certainly above 80 degrees or thereabouts, the PC would just, that's it, it's had enough, it would die. So we're going to be keeping an eye on this at the moment as well. Okay, that's it guys, look. Two minutes, 53 into the test, Gaussian blur. The PC is actually locked up, the mouse is not moving, everything's dead. 
And you can see here the CPU package actually didn't reach very hot. It was only at 49 degrees. Uh, CPU load only 91. So that's it. System is unstable. We weren't even able to run the Geekbench test. So that's it. We're going to turn it off now, change the CPU and see if we can get further than just it locking up. Okay, first things first, I'm going to open the lid and I'm just going to tighten the little screws here and that will keep it from falling on me because it does that from time to time. I'm going to turn the power supply off and if you've got this at home, pull the power supply wire to at the mains then you know it's definitely, definitely not going to bite you. I've got this little auxiliary fan, I'm going to remove that. I don't think I'm going to need that in the new configuration and I'm pretty sure it wasn't doing much anyway. So I've got my hand like here, I've just got this very small screwdriver and I'm just undoing the water cooler. It's basically four screws on the top. And if you've got um, your CPU cooler, it might be a different sort of style. They certainly come in a, a variety, some screw, some clip. This is a Zalman, Zalman liquid cooling system. And uh, that basically has four screws. There we go, so that's the four screws out. So I'm just gonna get a bit of blue roll and the reason is, you'll see now, I'm just gonna unplug the cooler. It's gonna have thermal paste on it. So we'll wipe that thermal paste away. It's good and clean for next time. We'll leave that on the side. And the CPU is actually here and you can't see it because it's behind the memory. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it a wipe before I remove it again. That's got thermal paste on it. I don't really fancy getting that everywhere all over me. There she is, the old CPU, but again, a bit too much thermal paste, if anything. Look at that, it's all over the place. I'm just gonna give it a wipe so we can see. There you go, AMD FX9590. Hopefully, very similar to what we've bought now, just to sort of hold them up side by side, AMD FX9590, so that looks pretty good. Diffused in Germany, made in Malaysia. Try them both out, dates and match all match. Just going to open our thermal paste. Just going to pop the new CPU in here, we'll put the thermal paste afterwards, just make sure that it's aligned the right way, there are markings on them so you can't really get it wrong, but just double check before you pop it in. Last thing you want to do is break a CPU because you've tried to jam it in the wrong way. On the tubes there are markings here so you can work out how much thermal paste you need, so how many squizzes. Not really sure on the calibration but I'll, I'll go for one and if I, one's not enough we'll try two. Yep, through my estimation one is enough, so that's all you're going to need, just measure and buy that. So all that remains is I get the heat pump back in place. Almost there. And that's it. CPU is now changed. Just going to turn the machine on and hopefully it will come back on for us. New CPU installed, great. F1 for setup. I'm not sure really what we want to do at this stage. I'm just going to say load optimize defaults. There we go. Save changes and exit, yes please. Will it come back? It's really quiet now, it's just knocked off all the fans. It doesn't want them. So let's load up our speed test again. Geekbench 4. That's what we had before. Run CPU benchmark. Let's go. Bang.
Okay, we're about a minute in. So far what I've noticed is that the package though is running a lot cooler despite all the fans in the unit being off, so that's, that's, an, that's an interesting aside. I'm going to just bring up Task Manager and I'm hoping that doesn't affect our benchmarking too much. So I just want to check here. So we have eight logical cores, sorry, eight logical processors, four cores, sockets one, maximum speed 4.72, so that's pretty much the same as last time. And it's uh, running, running a flat out again. But yeah, just certainly the temperature seems to be well, it's starting to grow a little bit now because the uh, obviously this test is giving it a little bit more work to do, but it's just starting off lower. Right, we're getting there. We're getting to the point where the other one crashed again. 24 degrees, 29 degrees. It's hovering at very uh, reasonable temperature here. Done. Right, we've got our Geekbench result. So, single core, 3009, multi-core score, 10,658. No idea if this is good or not, processor codename Vishira. Socket AM3+, plus, four cores, eight threads, authentic AMD. Blah, 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 lots of caches and bits and bobs, 32 gigs of RAM. So, I'm very pleased about that. I think while we're here though, you know, running these tests, let's try this GPU test. I don't have them actually in SLI configuration, so I guess it's going to run it on one or the other. Not sure if they're both the same spec. It should be something similar. But let's just see what it says. Test done. OpenCL score 24,695. No idea if that's good or not. Radian 6800. It's just got these various bits and bobs here. So you can choose between both chips though. So interesting enough you could just run a benchmark on both. So that's pretty much my PC now running. I don't know until I give it a full test uh, to see really what's happened with it and if it's all just sound now. Sound as a pound hopefully. But yeah I now actually have enough bits now to build an entire second system including the same case. So I might do that in a future video and actually just see how that performs and then maybe have them running side by side. See if it's still unstable or maybe it's just a bit more stable in that new configuration. If you've got any comments down below on your PC woes, have you had a similar scenario where your PC has actually died and you've replaced every bit and then the last bit you changed was the bit that fixed it all. I guess that would be what would happen normally, but that last bit is the only thing you haven't changed. That's the bit that makes it more funny. Um, please click lick. Please click lick. Please click subscribe or like if you're that way inclined. And as ever, thank you for watching.